Good morning. Welcome to the Unitarian Church of Edmonton. My name is Gordon Ritchie. My pronouns are he, him. Karen Mills and I have the great pleasure of being the choir conductors of our church choir, Coriolis. And what a treat it is to be here in the sanctuary with you. And special welcome to all of those who are joining us online. It is good to be together. Before we begin our service, I have just a, um, one announcement and one notice that I need to give you. Next Sunday is not only Thanksgiving Sunday, we have Lewis Cardinal coming to speak uh, with us, which I am so excited about, um, but it's also what we're calling Food Bank Sunday, appropriate for being Thanksgiving. So for those of you who are joining us here in the sanctuary next Sunday, you are invited to bring a non-perishable food item, which we will donate to the food bank. So help us feed the food bank next Sunday. Uh, a point of the service, usually our chalice is lit at the beginning of the service. Please don't be alarmed when it's not lit. Karen has created an absolutely beautiful service for us this morning. And she has a very specific reason why the chalice is being lit later on in the service. So uh, just so you are aware of that. The Unitarian Church of Edmonton is a liberal, religious, multi-generational organization and community. We celebrate a rich mosaic of free-thinking, spiritual, spiritual questing individuals joined in common support and action. We welcome diversity, pursue the common good, and work for justice. We believe in the compassion of the human heart the warmth of community, and the search for meaning in our lives. We gather with gratitude today on Treaty 6 territory. There is down in my area, which is down in Riverdale, a teepee that's been set up and usually set up over this past few days in the evening. It has been lit in brilliant orange quite an exquisite sight to see in the evenings and very moving to see as well. We are grateful for that, grateful for those who have set that up and set up other teepees around in the city. A treaty is an inheritance, a responsibility, and a relationship. May we be good neighbors to one another, good stewards to our planet, and good ancestors to all our children. And so we, as, as we come together in this special time, I would ask that you take a moment to check any electronic devices that you may have. Please make sure that they are either turned off or silenced. Thank you. During the service this morning, you'll hear two renditions of the 23rd Psalm. One which is a favorite of mine. Uh, I've actually heard it as a choral work by Bobby McFerrin. But the first one is one of mine, a setting that I created some time ago during a rather dark period of my life. So I hope you enjoy my setting of You Are My Shepherd.
Our opening words this morning are by Reverend Gretchen Haley. There is a quiet courage in the choice to let go of the past, in the choice to be present in this new day, to live for this hour, this moment, and to believe in its possibilities to re re uh, release the regrets, to stop the spinning stories of what was and is no longer, to accept this gift, to believe that we are worthy still of happiness, of ease, of delight, and hope to believe that we have all we need to heal already and to receive this wholeness with ready hearts and open hands, saying only, thank you. Come, let us practice this surrender together, gathering up all the brave boldness we know can be found in our bones and bloods if we will breathe together, knowing ourselves as part of this one life filled with mystery, creativity, and power, challenging us, growing us, and calling us into partnership with all that is. Come, let us worship together. And come, let us sing together. This next song is our hymn of the month. It's in your teal hymn books. It's number 1015-1015. For those of you who are with us online, your um, text should be coming up on your screens. Uh, for those of us here in the sanctuary, the text will be on our screen, which it is. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I invite you here in the sanctuary to rise <clears throat> as you are willing and able as we join in singing hymn number 1015. Good morning, I'm Karen Mills. My pronouns are she, her, and I get the delight of 
being here with you and getting to be here every week with our choir. So it's pretty awesome. Uh, we always have a time in our service to share our abundance. Um, lots of us do this every single day, sharing with our communities, sharing with our family. But this is a time where we share to maintain the running of this congregation uh, because it is self-supported. But we also share half of the unidentified contributions uh, with a different charity every month. And this month our charity is Child Haven. Child Haven is an amazing, thank you, an amazing organization started by Fred and Bonnie Cappuccino. Fred is a UU minister uh, in the Ottawa area. Uh, they themselves are parents to 17 children. I think only two of them, perhaps their biological children and all the rest adopted. And they have started homes in about six locations throughout India and uh, Tibet, Asia, and do microloans, do teaching to help particularly single women be self-sufficient, provide education, nutrition, and housing for the many, many children who find themselves orphaned or whose parents can't make uh, a living uh, to sustain their families and so have to make the really heart-wrenching choice of life for them. And so this morning as we collect the offering, we will sing our offertory hymn, which is going to be 396. I know this rose will open. It's also going to be on your screens. And I'll invite the ushers to now come forward and take the offering. invite the ushers to bring the offering forward and as they do we'll sing together from you I receive. for your generosity. I'll now invite Louise Cherich forward to do our next reading. Go Boldly by Jean Olson. May you be brave enough to expose your aching woundness and reveal your vulnerability. May you speak your deepest truths knowing that they will change as you do. May you sing the music within you, composing your own melody, playing your song with all your heart. May you draw, paint, sculpt, and sew, showing the world your vision. May you write letters, poetry, biography, slogans, graffiti, the great novel, laying bare your words to love and hate. May you love even though your heart breaks again and again. 
and until the end of your days, may your life be filled with possibilities and courage. Thank you, Louise. You might be picking up by now that our theme of the month is courage. It is indeed. And so let us courageously sing our next hymn. It's one of my favorites, uh, found in your uh, dark hymn, uh, hardcover hymn book for those who may need one here in the sanctuary. It's number uh, 86, Blessed Spirit of My Life. Um, again, those of you who are with us online, invite you to join in singing as we rise in body and spirit here in the sanctuary and join in singing hymn number 86, Blessed Spirit of My Life. love be my legacy. Loving that. Absolutely loving that. May it be so. And may love and compassion and community be our legacy. Feeling connected with this community. Whether we're here in the sanctuary, whether we're online, may we feel this blessed community and the connection that we have. And so let us take some time to acknowledge all the joys, sorrows, celebrations, times of trouble, times of challenge, times when we have been courageous. Yes, we definitely need, need to celebrate those times. And so we light candles. We have two candle stations set up in our sanctuary. For those of you who are with us online during this time, I invite you to write your thoughts into the chat. Thoughts of love, thoughts of thanks, thoughts of courage for those who may need it. And so for those of you here in the sanctuary now with either of our candle stations, I invite you to come forward now to light your chalice and candles.
May these tiny candles be our light of courage. May they light not only our darkness, but those who are in darkness. I would like to ask Wendy to come forward and light our candle for Ukraine. Thank you, Wendy. May we carry these joys, these concerns, and moments represented in these tiny, tiny candles in our hearts. They express very deeply that we are not alone. Blessed be. I'd now like to invite you into a time of meditation. So I invite you to feel the back of the chair supporting your back. Open your front. Close your eyes if you're comfortable doing that. Just focus on your breath. Calm and relaxed inhalation and a full cleansing exhalation. I'm going to share a reading with you. Take a couple seconds of silence and then follow that with music. I invite you just to be with your thoughts through all of it. In a world so filled with brokenness and sorrow, it would be easy to lose ourselves in never ending grief, to be choked by our outrage, to be paralyzed by the enormity of suffering to feel our hearts squeeze tight with hopelessness. Instead, this morning, let us simply breathe together as we hold our hearts open. Breathing in as our hearts fill with compassion. Breathing out, we pray for world, a better healing world and lives. Breathing in, opening ourselves to the transforming power of love. Breathing out as we pray for peace in our world and in our lives. Breathing in as we hold hope in our hearts. And breathing out as we pray for justice in our world and in our lives. May we know our strength. May we be filled with courage. May our love flow from us into this world. Breathing in, we are the prayer. Breathing out, we are the healing. Breathing in, we are the love. Breathing out, we are the peace. Breathing in, we are the hope. Breathing out, we are the justice. May we know our strength. May we be filled with courage. And may our love flow from us into this world. Amen. Blessed be. And may it be ever so.
Well, the cowardly lion went to the wizard when he needed courage. In Finding Nemo, Dory the clownfish had friends along her journey, and her mantra, just keep swimming, just keep swimming. In the animated movie Brave, Princess Merida had to look in many places to discover her source of courage. But we're not movie characters. So where do we look in the scary times? Well, it seems to me we have two options, to look without and to look within. For centuries, humans have looked outside themselves for inspiration and courage. Some look to gods and other divine figures. For some, the thought of a being with extraordinary powers is inspiring. For others, I think it may be the concept that there's someone watching and guiding, perhaps like a parent figure that is comforting for them, that gives them strength. The Bible tells of characters like Moses and Job and Noah, who took roles that were often physically and socially punishing because they felt they were guided by a God to do so, and they believed in that. And they all said that their God gave them strength and courage. Some people look to heroes as models of courage. Many of our favorite stories that we tell are about heroes and those who are brave in the face of daunting challenges. Some are fictional, like Superman and Wonder Woman and The Incredibles. Some of them are real, like Gandhi and Rosa Parks, Terry Fox. But all of them put themselves on the line to bring about the world that they want to see. They act to right the wrongs and they refuse to settle for the status quo. I think it's important to note that they're not perfect, nor do they ever say that they are. Any believable hero never professes to be perfect. They choose to act and to strive for something better in spite of their flaws. In the beautiful reading that Louise did, it said, may you be brave enough to expose your aching woundedness and reveal your vulnerability. May you love even though your heart breaks again and again. For me, it's this vulnerability that is the key to courage. To me, the ability to be vulnerable, to continue to share your whole and true self, knowing that you might be hurt or disappointed, and to keep doing it over and over is the true definition of courage. I really think this uh, idea is captured cleverly in a quote by the writer and illustrator Brian Andreas. And if you haven't seen his drawings, I'd really encourage you to look him up. They're very um, multicolored kind of line drawings, often clowns and gestures, sort of people, and then a handwritten saying, and he puts out one a day. Uh, I don't know where his ideas come from, but they're brilliant. Um, but his quote's also in this month's Soul Matters package. And he says, anyone can slay a dragon but try waking up every morning and loving the world all over again. That's what it takes to be a real hero. In the package, there's also an equally powerful quote from writer Mary Ann Radmacher, and she says, courage doesn't always roar. Sometimes courage is the quiet voice at the end of the day saying, I will try again tomorrow. These two quotes for me point out the other key but hard part of courage, taking action. We can't just think courageously, we actually have to do something about it. Intent without action is just a wish. It could be easy to watch a movie hero and say, well, if I had muscles like that, or if I had that magic suit, or if I had that cape, I could do that stuff too. But the heroes, our historical figures, they were inspired by other forces, but they weren't truly courageous until they found the strength within themselves to overcome their fear, to overcome their struggle with being hurt, with being disappointed. They were fearful and flawed, but they decided something was important enough that they were going to act anyways. That, to me, is courage. As a congregation, we've just adopted a new mission and vision statement and a covenant, and to bring them to life might cause some discomfort. 
We'll all have to learn to be together in different ways. We will need to be vulnerable and open to new ways of learning and doing things. And we're human, so there is going to be disappointment. But the future of our new mission and vision and covenant is so beautiful and important that I believe we will be courageous and put our fears and insecurities aside to work at being that best version of ourselves. As a congregation, we've gone through a lot of change in the last few years. Yet, here we are today, and I think the better and the stronger for it. We have strength. We have resilience. We have learned to be and love together. So let's remember that, and let's look to each other and the heroes that came before us to start this congregation for inspiration. And let us know that the value that each of us brings and the value that every newcomer who visits us brings far outweighs our flaws. Let us continue to be courageous and let us end each day saying, I'll try again tomorrow. I chose that piece, one, because I think it's a beautiful setting, uh, but the other because I loved the idea of having a tradition or a past teaching that was meaningful, but your, your thinking might have changed, might have evolved, and so layering on a new feminine for the divinity there with an ancient text. Uh, just a new, a new take on an old tradition to provide it meaning at the time for the person. We are now coming to our chalice lighting. The reason that I kept the chalice lighting to this portion of the service was because it actually has an affirmation that I would like you to share in. 
but I thought it was really important that we talk about courage first and really think about what that meant before you actually read the affirmation because it's a bit of a commitment. And so we've done that now. We've had some time to think about it. And so we're going to light our chalice. There's a small reading first that I will do and then the affirmation part will come up on the screen and I would invite you to read it if you are comfortable with the idea that it presents and I'll give you time to pre-read. So the, the chalice lighting is by Erica Hewitt. She says, the word courage comes from the Latin core, which means heart. According to poet Mark Nepo, the original use of the word courage meant to stand by one's core, striking a striking concept that reinforces the belief found in almost all traditions that living from the center is what enables us to face whatever life has to offer. To encourage means to hearten, to impart confidence. This is our work as a religious community, to encourage one another, to be bold in engaging the world around us as well as what scares us internally, to give one another the confidence and heart to live as fully as possible. Now your part. With full hearts, we affirm our relationships with one another. We recognize our agency and our connected power. And we accept our responsibility to be bold and courageous. This next reading is a story by Jan Tadeo called Crossing Bridges. When I was very young, my family often went camping at Assateague Island on the Maryland shore. It was a long drive, but there were lots of adventures along the way. The last adventure was crossing the Branzano Bridge over the Sinipuent Bay. This was one of my favorites. As we approached the bridge, my father would holler back to all us kids, look out, it looks like we're gonna land in the water. The Veranzano Bridge rises sharply, so you can't see the other side until you get close to the top. As you approach, it feels like you will fall right off the edge of the bridge when you get there. Creating adventure was a theme in my family. My father would take us out on Sunday drives just to get lost. He would say things like, let's turn down this road and see where it takes us. 
my mother would take us on penny hikes, flipping a coin at each fork in the trail to see which direction to walk next. We explored trails, creeks, and went bushwalking a few times, always looking for new adventures. Growing up with an appreciation for the unknown and creating adventures in unexpected ways has served me well. I like to try new foods and activities, go to places I haven't been before, ride roller coasters, especially ones in the dark. I love Star Trek because they boldly go where no one has gone before. I like to explore new ways of doing things, even when I'm not certain how it'll turn out. Sometimes I do like to reinvent the wheel and I try very hard to think outside the box and invite others to open the box for me when I get stuck inside. Unitarian Universalists step out into the unknown all the time as we embark on our spiritual adventures. We go searching for new ways to make meaning of our lives, to create a more just and loving world, to answer questions of intimacy together, ultimacy together, and intimacy. We seek creative ways to raise our children with inquiring minds and loving hearts, and to provide them with the tools to navigate an unpredictable future. We cross bridges and borders as we learn to navigate the multicultural world around us that challenges us to expand our worldview and embrace new ways of engaging a changing world. Whether we're crossing a bridge from a place of comfort to challenges we never anticipated, or from our own cultural norms to completely new worldviews, we have resources, friends, and mentors to guide us. If we're crossing the bridge from youth to young adult, or from career to retirement, somehow we find the tools we need to navigate our way to the other shore. For this amazing journey, we carry in our backpacks a sense of wonder, a sense of humor, and a lot of courage. Our compass is the compassion we hold for all our neighbors. Our sustenance is the joy of discovering our true selves and experiencing the divine in one another. Our map is the sacred covenant we hold with one another to walk this journey together. With so many tools to guide and support us as we approach new bridges, it's not such a leap of faith to trust that we will arrive at the distant shore. Together, we can boldly go where our vision and our faith call us to go. So this is my recipe book. Uh, many. My mother can attest to the fact that I think I probably have about 80, or that's last count. Um, I always have little books filled with recipes that I find online or something else. And so the other day I was looking for a recipe for oat muffins or something. I can't remember now. And see, I've got recipes here. And I came across a a lovely writing by Margaret Weiss, or Weiss, whichever one you want to say. And it's another recipe. It's a recipe for resilience. This recipe has been tweaked over time, so adjust as necessary. Sometimes it yields more servings than anticipated. Sometimes it needs a bit more of this ingredient or that. It comes from generations who have gone before me, and I've added my own flavor along the way. A recipe for resilience. One part, courage. 
two parts, tears of failure and doubt. One part, deep listening. One part each of both silence and laughter, a dash of trust, a pinch of wonder, and a heaping scoop of naps and snacks. In a separate bowl, mix together family, friends, and those who challenge you to be your best self, and those with whom you disagree. Add slowly to the large pot, add a bay leaf for whatever it is bay leaves do, and let simmer for as long as you need, which is often more than you realize or anticipate. You've got to get that flavor. Keep the heat at an even temperature, hot enough to cook throughout, but not so hot that it burns the bottom. It can be served at room temperature, warm or even cold if necessary. Serve alongside your favorite soft blanket, dog, cat, or other soft item or two. Make often, share with others. Hold on to the leftovers. You'll need them after a long day that challenges your soul. Let us join in our final hymn this morning. It's number 1015, found in your Teal hymn books, When I Am Frightened. I invite you to rise in body and spirit as we join in singing hymn number 1015. Oh, sorry, 1012, 1012, 1012. Thank you for having the courage to correct me. Yes, it's working. <laughs> Thank you all. Please be seated. Closing words by Leslie Ahuva Fails. All that we have been separately, all that we will become together, is stretched out before and behind us like scattered stars scattered across a canvas sky. We stand at the precipice, arms locked together like tandem skydivers working up the courage
to jump. Tell me, friends, what have we got to lose? Our fear of failure? Our mistrust of our own talents? What have we got to lose? A poverty of the spirit? The lie that we are not alone? What wonders await us in the space between the first leap and the moment our feet, our wheels, however we move our bodies across this precious earth, touch down softly on unknown soil? What have we got to lose that we can't replace with some previously unimaginable joy? And words by Eric Williams. The world is too beautiful to be praised by only one voice. May you have courage to sing your part. The world is too broken to be healed by only one set of hands. May you have the courage to use your gifts. May you go in peace. In a moment, we'll be singing our closing song, Carry the Flame, and then I'll ask you to be seated for our postlude. But I want to say thank you for all of you for being here with us this morning. <laughs> I get so choked at this. <laughs> and thank you all of you for joining us online. It is wonderful to be together. For Coriolis, for having the courage to sing the music that Karen and I so lovingly give them. <laughs> For all of those who step up within our congregation, the members and friends to make these services possible. For those who make coffee, those who usher, our greeters, our musicians, our incredible tech team, those who work here in the sanctuary and those who are working with us online. Thank you all so very much. And so I invite you to Rise as you are willing and able. Stay, where, stay in place, and if you wish, reach out and put a hand on a shoulder of those around you as we sing together our closing song, Carry the Flame. Please be seated for the postlude. Some of you may have heard this piece sung by Coriolis last year. It was written by a, an amazing singer-songwriter, Lee Morris, from the States. There are actions, the words you may pick up quite quickly. You're welcome to join in singing. You're welcome to join in the actions. This is called Peace Be With Me. Peace. 